welcome to my threading your sewing machine intro video. Most entry level machines like the Eversewn Sparrow 15, the Burnett, some of the Singers are assembled in somewhat similar ways. Every sewing machine is going to have similar pathways for its thread. It's going to have a spindle to hold your spool of thread, a thread guide, maybe another before the tension discs, uh, an uptake hook to thread it through, and a thread guide at the top of your needle shaft before you thread the thread through the needle. The machine will also have a flywheel located at the right side of your sewing machine. It will have some kind of a bobbin case, either a drop-in or a bobbin hook assembly, which will be on the front of the machine, as well as stitch options, stitch length, thread tension, and sometimes a reverse button. Located on the top of the machine are the spool holders, the thread tension, and the stitch length, as well as the bobbin winder. This model also has a dial to adjust the downward pressure of the presser foot, lighter pressure for thin fabrics like chiffon, or higher pressure for thick fabrics like canvas and denim. Located on the back of your sewing machine will be a lever to lift your presser foot. Always remember to lift that before threading your sewing machine. This machine comes with a stitch choosing dial. In each choice are three stitches that are then activated by a second dial for stitch one, stitch two, or stitch three. You also have the choice of lengthening your stitches and increasing the tension at the top of the machine. Here are my sample stitches with two different colored threads. Now we're talking about thread and thread spools. There's the straight wound spools of thread and there are the cross wound spools of thread. Each spool goes on a specific spindle. The horizontal spindle on this machine takes the cross wound thread fitted with a thread cap at the top of the thread that will hold the thread in place as the thread is fed through your sewing machine. The straight wound thread spindle is not installed for fear of breaking it off. It is in the toolkit. It usually comes with some form of a felt pad that the spool of thread will rest on. Some machines have a pop-up button spindle this machine spindle fits into a port at the top of the machine that you can remove for transport and then put the straight wound spindle on top and feed your thread through the machine. No thread cap needed. Threading your machine, whether the thread is cross wound or straight wound, is the same. There will be a thread guide somewhere at the start this one is right there outside of the spool. Then there will be another thread guide right before your tension discs, and the tension discs are inside the head of the machine. After your tension discs, you'll go down the front of the machine following the arrows or the manual, and then up and around the uptake hook. Now the uptake hook is that little silver line at the top of your machine there. If you cannot see it, turn your flywheel towards you until it comes to the top of the machine. Once through the uptake hook, you now have to go through a very small thread holder at the top of your needle shaft. It's much easier to do with two hands and hook it around that thread guide. Then once it's in there, the only thing left to do is thread your needle, either just with your eyeballs looking at the eye or with the automatic threader. The bottom half of your sewing machine contains a bobbin, and in this bobbin you can wind whatever thread you want so that it matches your top thread. The way that you wind a bobbin is on your bobbin winder at the top of your sewing machine. The way to turn on the bobbin winder when your bobbin's ready to wind is to rock it to the right. Now to feed thread from your spool into your bobbin winder, you'll follow the first thread guide and then around the bobbin tension holder, which is a metal looking post with a kind of collar around it. And that's going to hold your ten the tension in your thread nice and tight. 
Now the bobbins come with little holes where you can feed thread through them to hold them while it winds. Feed it through the thread hole and pop it back on the bobbin winder, activate it, and now when you step on your pedal, it will wind the bobbin. In many sewing machines, there is a toolbox or an accessories container. On this machine, you slide our front to the left and turn it around and inside there is a container for all your extra feet, uh, oil, brushes, and tools to change needles. Behind it is where our bobbin case is. On this machine, we have a bobbin hook assembly instead of a drop-in. Some machines have a drop-in case. To remove your bobbin case on this machine, there is a small finger grab that enables you to grab the case and slide it out. To insert a new bobbin of thread, make sure your thread tail is coming off the top of the spool. Make sure your finger of your bobbin case is at the top and slide the bobbin in. Now the thread is going to go through a small groove and then the tension discs of the bobbin case. You'll hear a little snap as the thread goes in between those two little fingers and that is what holds the thread nice and tight while it sews in your sewing machine. Now to reinsert your bobbin case into your bobbin hook assembly, make sure the finger is pointing to the top in that little divot where the finger belongs. As you line up all of the parts and push straight back, you should hear a small snap and that lets you know that the bobbin case is in securely. To use the automatic threader on most machines, there is a little bit of finesse to it. You have a side, left side metal hook, and then you have two forks that go around the needle eye. So the first thing you do is hook the thread against that left hook and hold it tight, not too tight, but just gently. And then you'll slide your thread in between the two forks on either side of the needle. And as you gently release that spring-loaded threader, it will pull a loop through the eye of the needle. Now that the top thread is threaded through the needle, we can bring the bobbin thread up through the stitch plate. The yellow thread is the bobbin thread and the purple thread is the top thread. I'm going to gently hold my top thread, turn my flywheel towards me a full rotation, and as I pull up on the purple top thread that has now gone through and around the bobbin hook, like so, I have a yellow loop at the top through the presser foot and the stitch plates. Not all machines require you to do this. I find it's just easiest to start this way. And then I hook them around the thread cutter on the side of the machine to hold them up and out of the way. With your toolbox reinstalled and your threads threaded at the top and bottom, you are ready to begin stitching. Now, once you have your fabric, insert it below your presser foot, lower your presser foot, gently hold the thread tails with a finger or your hands, and begin stitching. By holding the thread tails as you start your first two or three stitches, I keep the machine from creating those unsightly bird nests in the bottom half of my project. Not every machine does this, but enough do it that I've just made it a habit. As you finish your line of stitching, make sure your needle is in the up position. If it's not, use your flywheel to turn it until it is. Lift your presser foot and cut your project off of the machine. 
There you can see I've got some blanket stitches and the thread nests that happened when I didn't hold my thread tails. This machine has two dials, the choice dial and the stitch option dial. Each stitch has three different options layered underneath it and you use the top dial to choose which one of the three stitches you are using at that time. They are color coded on this machine. Other machines might just have them as number one, number two, and number three. Here I have switched to a straight stitch which is a typical construction stitch and not a decorative stitch like the previous one. This is what you would use to seam a garment together or assemble pieces for a quilt. Sometimes thread might get stuck in this bottom half of your machine. We've already removed the bobbin case and now we are opening up the fingers to remove the bobbin race and hook assembly. This is the area where sometimes a little bit of thread might get stuck or lint might accumulate and you need to use your brush to clean it out. And this is also where every eight hours or every other project you might want to add a drop of oil. Most machines come with it. If not, it's a typical Zoom Spout machine oil and one drop will do. Now we reassemble the bobbin hook race assembly. Each piece goes a certain direction, so if it's not quite fitting in, just adjust it a little bit. Don't try to force it. Those little fingers then get turned back towards the center and they hold it in place while you stitch. <laughs> 